Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it within their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from the least to the greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. 
Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall return to you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. few announcements first. Confession will not be available after Mass today due to a baptism, but we will have confession available at Holy Family on Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. following Mass and Stations of the Cross. And then also confessions will be available this Friday here at St. John Vianney from 7 to 8 p.m. 
Please have any Easter memorial flower donations in to the parish office by Monday. Dynamic Catholic's prayer process cards are available in the gathering space. These cards are helpful in prioritizing daily prayer and are free to anyone who would like to take one. And then the Easter Mass schedule has changed. The Easter Vigil Mass will still be Saturday night at 8 p.m. at St. John Vianney. But then on Easter morning, Mass will be at 7.30 at Holy Family, 9.30 here, and 11 a.m. here. In order to help us plan and prepare, please make your reservations on our website or by calling the parish office. We've reached the fifth Sunday of Lent, the Sunday after Rejoice Sunday, which traditionally is also called Passion Sunday. Uh, it's a point at which the church kind of starts to deepen even more the penitential spirit entering into these two weeks, focusing on the Lord's passion more and more. One of the things traditionally that can be done is to veil all the statues and the crucifixes in the church. Um, it's not a tradition we have, but uh, it's something that can be done to deepen that sense of penitence, of even depriving our eyes of the beauty of the statues. Um, also, some of our readings uh, turn a little bit more gloomy. <laughs> turn to kind of the truth of Jesus' passion and how we ourselves must take up our cross. Our gospel today. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world preserves it for eternal life. Our second reading, similarly, talks about Jesus Christ. When he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Jesus, in his sufferings, learns obedience. All of us, in a way, do when we suffer, when we experience difficulty, ideally, we learn. It's the good old phrase, we learn, we try to learn from our mistakes. Something that's a little different, though, for us, Jesus' sufferings were all exterior, from exterior sources. Whether it was the physical sufferings that people caused him, whether it was the temptations that came from the devil, whether it was seeing other people overlooked and harmed, whether it was seeing the pain in the eyes of a mother, the pain in the eyes of his own mother. They were all exterior, external to him. They were coming from external sources. Something unique to us, of course, because we are sinful, is the suffering we experience from our own sins. The sufferings we cause ourselves because of our bad choices. King David in this psalm today is learning from one of his choices. If you remember, he has relations with the wife of a soldier because he lusted after her. She becomes pregnant, and so J David has that soldier murdered. Well, not murdered. He ends up dying in battle because all the support for them was withdrawn, and so they were going to die, and David ordered that that happen. Then Nathan the prophet, David, of course, doesn't realize this, He's kind of panicking and trying to cover up his sin with a greater sin. 
And so it's not until the Lord sends Nathan the prophet, and Nathan gives him this allegory of a man stealing a young, precious lamb from another man. What should be done to the man who stole the lamb? He should be punished severely. And then that great line from Nathan, you are the man. David finally realizes what he has done. And then he enters into mourning and grief, penance. And it's from this spirit of penance, realizing the guilt that is on his soul, he writes this psalm and is the author of this psalm that the church prays every Friday in the Liturgy of the Hours. Every day, a kind to every Friday, a day to meditate on Christ's sufferings himself in our need for God's mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt. And of my sin, cleanse me. You can hear his grief as he pours out his heart. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. The anguish in his heart because of the evil he has done realizing what a terrible choice he has made. He yearns to experience again God's love. He realizes he has lost something. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me, which then turns into a resolve for the future. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Each of us with our own sufferings caused by our own sins. We might not have the Lord send a prophet to us, but it's there. If we will take the time in prayer, we will recognize that anguish in our heart, that need for God's mercy. It's so easy, though, to run away from it, to cover it up and not even encounter it, not even worry about it and think about it, because there's so many easy distractions in this life. There's plenty on the news for us to listen to and quickly and easily get angry at and then focus all of our emotional energy at that. Or there's plenty to entertain ourselves with on the internet, on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever have you. There's plenty of video games to play for hours on end in order to avoid encountering the Lord and spending a minute in our interior selves, in our interior room, or TV, or Netflix, or Hulu, or whatever it have you. It's easy today to avoid prayer, to avoid those feelings which are unpleasant, the suffering from which if we spend time encountering the Lord in the midst of it, we will learn obedience. And that's a difficult task for us, especially something we try to take up in these last two weeks, entering more deeply into the Lord's passion so we can properly celebrate the joy of the resurrection and our salvation. The challenge to go to our interior room, to feel the suffering there, unpleasant as it might be, from our own shame and guilt, the suffering that we cause ourselves. If we run from it, it stays there. And oftentimes, later in life, it comes back to haunt us five or tenfold. Because now we have these things from many years ago which we've never dealt with, but we've always kind of tried to ignore or put off. 
which has led oftentimes to other poor decisions. To sit with that anguish, that grief, and there then to encounter the Lord who wants to heal us, who wants to give back to us the joy of his salvation, who wants to sustain that willing spirit in us and give us the resolve to live a better love, to live as a better spouse, to live as a better child, a better neighbor, to live as a better Christian, bringing this to the Lord in the sacrament of confession, bringing it to the Lord so that he can give us again what we have lost. So he can give us again that joy in experiencing his mercy, his compassion, his salvation, so that we can live his love more deeply and we can live better as a child of God. Turning to the Lord, we bring to him our needs and our petitions. Our response is, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. That as the church continues her Lenten observances, may we grow ever more committed to our walk with Christ, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation's leaders, that they may follow God's will in working together to promote peace and serving those in need, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation this Easter season, that they may be conscious of the Spirit of God in their lives, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctity of life, may we protect life at all stages and work for an end to abortion, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, that they may listen attentively and respond to God's call to the priesthood 
and religious life, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those without a home, the hungry, and individuals and families in need around our diocese, that their needs may continue to be met through our support of the Catholic Ministries Appeal Programs and Services, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Emmeline Spitzer and Tom Horky, whom we remember at Mass this weekend, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in our prayer after Mass. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.